So this is, in this case, this is a piece of copper and it's black because it's really rough. So what it's got on it is uh, very fine hairs of copper oxide that are growing out to make it really rough. And then it's coated with uh, the kind of stuff you have on your Gore-Tex jacket to make it to, uh, to make it hydrophobic. That stuff is a it's a fluoropolymer, so it's like Teflon, but it's got another piece on the end which I won't tell you what is that sticks to surfaces. So it's got a bit that sticks to the surface and a bit that's water repellent on the other end. As a result of all that, you end up with a very rough surface that's made out of effectively Teflon. And uh, because it's very rough, when you put water on it, it can't go into the very narrow channels in between because it's rough and hydrophobic. So the water stays on the top and there's a, an air film underneath, which I'll attempt to show you. If this one works, you can squirt water on it and it kind of rolls off like that. So the drops actually bounce around if they don't get stuck on a bit of dirt on there. I can and see roll that. off. So this is glass coated with exactly the same stuff. So if you get some, try and put a drop on it. If yeah. you put a drop on it like that, then it sits on there with an angle underneath it that's a bit higher than 90 degrees so there's, there's a bit of a drop sticking out above the surface and if you pour it it kind of slides off like that but these surfaces they have a much higher angle so the drop is nearly a whole drop the instead of having half a circle on the top of the of water on the top of the the solid you have nearly a whole sphere on the top like a little marble and um, if you, do, if you do that, then the, the drop, instead of sliding off like a snail, like these do, um, they bounce off like the ones did previously. And what you can't do with this one is to hold it up at 90 degrees and the water stay on it like that. Right, and what I was going to then explain was, if, we had, if you then take a, a little bath of water, um, you may have difficulty seeing this. It's weird, you can see it with your eye, but it's really difficult to photograph. So if you put a normal piece of glass in, the water touches it normally, just as you would expect. This is hydrophobic glass, so it comes back off again and comes out clean. Um, if you put this in, then there's a shiny film of air at the surface, and the wa water doesn't actually touch it. So what's going on in there? So what's going on there is you've got this rough surface, and the hollows in the surface are fill filled with air, even though it's underwater. So you've got air inside this, you've got uh, little spikes with air in between and what you're actually seeing reflecting off is the water air interface at the bottom of the water. Um, and obviously the idea behind that is, well, plants use it to stop things growing on them. Bacteria can't, and fungi can't land on them and, and get some water and penetrate the plant and grow because there's no water on there and when it rains the water all runs off like that carries all the fungal spores off, makes them clean again. They are limited to certain, to certain uses only, but they are very useful for those, those particular things. Uh, things that people are interested in are things like solar panels. So if you coat your solar panels with these, you don't, you're not likely to get up and walk around on them on your roof very often. And you don't really want to have to go up there and clean them very much. So it's best if green, green algae doesn't grow on them. And that happens best when they're dry all the time, which happens best when the water runs off straight away. If you take Teflon and make it rough, it does exactly this. So a rough Teflon surface is super hydrophobic. If you take Teflon and have it flat, then uh, there's no, then there's a contact between all of the liquid and the surface. And so it behaves just like this piece of glass that's been treated with Teflon. Um, so a, a Teflon surface would be just like this. Uh, the water would sit on it like half a ball and if you tilted it up the water won't run off. Um, if you take normal glass water runs off but, that, but the, the angle at the edges is very low so the water spreads out and then it kind of drains down as a film and uh, the advantage of super hydrophobic surfaces over that is that it, the drops bouncing around tend to carry away particles with them. The disadvantage is that super hydrophobic surfaces tend to be not clear because they have some kind of roughness so you tend to get some kind of milkiness even if the features are very small. We've looked at various things so um, we didn't invent it um, 
plants obviously did that, but somebody discovered it, uh, people discovered it in different ways. Um, the, so the initial papers were on, on fabric, so Gore-Tex, um, well, before Gore-Tex even, people coated fabric, coated cotton with different things to make it waterproof, and they noticed that it behaves in an odd way, unlike a flat surface. And that was in the 1960s sometime. Um, the, uh, so we didn't invent the, the idea, but we've been looking at uh, various things. So we look at the physics of it. Um, it's, a, it's, it's unusual. It has unusual physics because um, the, the, uh, the water is not really in contact with the solid at all. It's kind of floating above it and it's, it behaves as a strange composite of a drop that's sort of suspended in the air and a drop that's on the surface and um, there, there's a lot of uncertainty over why it does things so we, we, we investigated things like that we investigate um, the spreading of other liquids on them and um, so if you if you take something that does spread on it it spreads out faster um, and it spreads to a lower angle as well, but what, what we discovered was that it spreads out faster than it could on a flat surface. So we do research for research's sake, but we like to keep an eye on, on end goals. And um, both phenomena, so super spreading and super non-wetting, are reasonably exciting. So um, if you, a lot of industrial processes like to coat things with liquids, and the speed that you can do that is governed by the rate of spreading. And so obviously if you can spread faster, that's better.